Woohoo! Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever lost a pet and who hasn't and want to hear from them again to know they're okay, know what they're up to, know where they're at, and know whether they still like or love you, or simply to help heal your heart from the trauma or traumatic time when they left, then do we have the all-empowering, powerful, heartwarming, grab your Kleenex show for you. Today, I'll be talking with Megan Sisk, the most amazing animal communicator we've ever met, and the only one we use personally about all things animal communication, and especially hearing your pets from the other side of the veil and how to do it. Plus, you'll want to hang around as we'll be taking your questions live and do a brief guided meditation at the very end. So welcome back to the show, Megan. Are you ready to shine? I am, Michael. I love being here with you. Woohoo! I love having you here. All right, I'm going to go there. Before we even dive right into things, I had no plans on going there. But since we've had a Rue cam up at the beginning, you've had a talk with Rue and he had a near-death experience. Do you want to share about this? <laughs> yeah, Michael. Well, before the show started, you know, and I'm channeling the energy coming in and feeling all of it, you went to get Rue and I felt this energy coming from him and you know, not, you know, Rue and I have such a, such an old relationship, but he, there was a moment of trepidation that I felt of him coming into this room. And, and I, you know, I, there was this energy of Rue, this isn't about you. You're clearly vital and strong. And he instantly dropped me into the last real talk that we had had where he had what he now, and I think this is because of you, refers to his near-death experience. Because, Michael, <laughs> you're not the only one sorry, who gets Rue. to have a near-death experience. <laughs> Rue needed one, too. And so, you know, and this takes us back to where he was. Um, Rue got pretty sick for a minute there. And he, he fought his way through, and he fought his way through for you and for Jessica. And also to make sure that you two knew how to, to, know, knew how to parent little baby Hannah. And uh, I thought, I thought you were going to go with, with him uh, jumping out of the boat and not making. Oh, it. <laughs> the, he's, so now he's, so the jumping out of the boat, Michael, because like you, and you've got more than one near death experience. Rue now thinks, well, you've got to have quite a few, right? No, and can't so, so clear, really. Can you tell him that, please? That was it. We're good. You know, look at him. He's fine. He thinks this is hysterical, but you know, he's embarrassed about the jumping out of the boat piece, right? So he he legitimately felt about when he was sick before and really fighting his way back with the help of all the, the doctors and the people who loved him. That, that for him was his real moment of this might be it. Yeah. And the jumping out of the boat, he would like you to know that it was just him having to learn how to swim. Very and good. He, yes, yeah. So. Very good. And 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 I will just say one little bit, although I'm remembering now we didn't get a beak trim today. And the reason I mention that is is what you don't know that he does now at this new house. And then I want to get into oh, communicating yeah. with our pets on the other side is we have kind of a dock. We have a dock out on the water, but we also have kind of the deck is almost like a dock. And below the dock is like a dog park. And so Rue, when I get near the edge, will fly off and down into the dog park. But now he doesn't fly down, he flies up and he has hit at least between 15 and 20 feet high, Megan. He is the daredevil's dare. He doesn't care if he sticks it and he just goes for it. And so each day right now, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh God, no, he's going longer and farther and testing himself and longer and farther. I'm saying you got to keep the beak to him because I don't want him to, to crack it on impact because he, right. he, will, he will sometimes go... <laughs> And right. shake himself off and look like, well, let's go. Let's do it again. And then the dock is a tenth of a mile long. I'll put him down many times a day at the end of the dock. And he will chase after me. Not trying to catch me like I'm going to get you, sucker. Playing with you. But he will chase after me doing a tenth of a mile sprint many times a day. And he's as fast as me now. It's great. He's got muscle. He's got legs. He's got, legs. He's got quads. He's I told you, Michael. Now. He is, you are his like his pedestal father and he is in your likeness you know your <laughs> athleticism his athleticism he is all in which is why he really does keep reminding me that it is king brew 
And, and, and I'm I know. sorry, Rue. <laughs> I will definitely call you Baby Rue or Junior because if he knows he's king, we're in trouble. All right. So let's right, shift right. gears from there. Right. And we can come back to you. <laughs> look at him look. <laughs> King Rue, we can come back to you if we need to. We've Megan, are our pets still with us after we die? Without a doubt. They're without a doubt, Michael. I have, in my experience, I have never had a conversation with anyone that has asked me to connect with their pet or had a conversation about it and I'm and had the answer be they're not here. They are always with us. They may be with us in different forms. They may be with us in different realms. They may be back with us in another animal or even sometimes in human form. Okay. So many different directions. <laughs> like I've got all of this down because I channeled beforehand. Yeah. All right. Do we go there? Do we start there? Do we talk? Okay. So we can, we want to talk about how we all communicate with them, but you just, you just threw at least three bombshells down. I think you said other realms. Uh huh. What does that mean? Well, that means that to me means when we, this is going to get into all, all that, that ascension, but Oftentimes, and I believe on many levels that our, our animals that we commune with and, and live with, that they're on an, a higher level than most of us are. I really believe after all the years <laughs> of speaking with animals that they're the ascended masters and we're the ones learning from them because, yeah, you know, I they, believe it. Right? they don't have the fear. They don't have, and we'll talk about that, about, you know, when, when they know they're passing or whatever, there's not that fear. But a lot of times our animals will stay in, in whatever the places that we, we like to call it, whether that would be heaven or divine source energy or the other side. And they'll stay as our guardians. They'll stay as our masters. They'll stay as angels. They'll ascend. They'll, you know, they'll become something quite much more than they were on earth in whatever body they had chosen to be in on earth. So that's what I mean by the other realms. Thank you. So <laughs> you did even more questions coming out of it. So they could be on the other side. They could be a spirit. They could be a guide. And I think you even use the word an angel. Absolutely. And oftentimes, you know, um, for the longest time, I had, I had a, I would get, I would get information, um, not even, not even in readings with, with my people, but I would, I, I don't know, driving, I'd hear turn left, or I would, you know, get information about certain people or certain calls I was going to have, or, and one day somebody said, who is it? And I, and I never think to ask. And when I, when I connected with it, without a doubt, it was a soulmate twin flame cat of mine. So this is the other piece of this is that we have our heart animals. We have our pets and we love all of them. But, and I think most of us would attest to the fact that some of them have a different and special place in our, in our lives and in our hearts. And so this particular cat of mine was my twin flame cat. Um, and when he crossed, and I didn't expect to talk about this um, so quickly, but when he passed going on 15 years ago now, it was that moment of just devastation when you know it's that 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 place that you don't know if you're going to crawl out of and as he was crossing i said to him you know you come back you come back and you find me like you make it clear and you come back and i i will know it's you <laughs> and so he passed on and and i waited and and time went on and and time went on and i tried to connect with him and i wouldn't hear him and I would look for signs and I wouldn't see them. And it was, it was un, it disconcerting for me because we had been for 16, almost 17 years inseparable. And so one day, about six months later, I had come across a kitten, a Maine Coon kitten who looked very much like him and brought this kitten home thinking, well, maybe you look a lot alike. And, and the, the distinguishing characteristic of my 
my original kitty Chester was that he slept with me for 17 years right here, regardless of anything else going on. He was always right here. And that's what I missed the most because my insomnia was gone. Anxiety was gone for those 16 years and then it was back. So this little kitten who I was hoping was Chester is, was just a love machine. And that very first night I was so excited and I went and retrieved him from his chair and brought him to bed. And as we were snuggling in and he was purring, all of a sudden you would have thought something electrocuted him. This cat went straight into the air, scratched my face, landed. I turned on the light and his entire body was puffed up. Like his, you know, when their tails hit everything and he was staring at me and I was staring at him. And in that moment, I was like, oh, you can't sleep here. Somebody's already there. And so I've always felt and I always feel it on this side. I even have a tattoo on my wrist of Chester's wow. paw, because when I communicate, it's his energy that very often I channel. I feel like he helps me connect deeply with other people's animals. Like he's my go-between. So that's yeah, that's like my, our daughter, Miraku. She's, she's my right. go-between now on everything. Yeah. She's, she's what I call the head of the boardroom and she'll call in yes. the different angels and guys. She's like, no, 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 no. I've got this. Yeah. So. That's it. Can we all communicate with our pets when they transition? Every one of us has the ability to connect and to hear and to use our intuition. Intuition isn't something that just some people have been gifted with. Intuition is within all of us. As, as everybody has a beating heart, everybody has an intuitive soul. And so every one of us can connect with our animals, but what I find with people when I work with people, and especially when people's animals have crossed over and why they're reaching out to me in the first place is because they have that frustration of, I don't, I can't connect with them. I don't feel them. I, you know, I don't know how. And yeah, I've always, you know, come from a place of, I'm not some psychic, um, yeah, I'm going to tell you things you don't know. I've always felt that what I am is the great validator. Because as the messages come through and I and I can give them to people, they always know. They're all they're always so aware of of what I'm already telling them. They know. And so they've already communicated, but self-doubt cancels out the reading. It's it's interesting because we're going to do a reading a little bit later on, on three of my pets, mm -hmm. one of whom who I haven't tried to communicate with much, which is interesting. Oh. Rue has just done a jailbreak. Hold yes. on one minute. I told I'll you he, he was wants worried. To stay in my arms. And if not, I'll have him take a nap. <laughs> he almost never does this during the show. So hold Michael, on. Michael, I told you he didn't like this subject. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on, you did. Come back here, Rue baby. <laughs> Oh, he's trying to put himself to bed. So let me have him say good night. He definitely doesn't like the topic. So he's definitely, he was doing, yeah. so oh, he's, he's a very, um, what's the word for it? Sensitive? Um, yeah, it's very sensitive to energy. But when he goes to sleep, mm -hmm. he wipes off his feet before he goes in his house. Um, like not, not bring dirt into his house. And so he was at, at the end of the table here, wiping off his feet and getting down into that position of going to bed. So he's very aware of the sacredness of the situation. And he's very aware of the presence of of people listening and the and the, the animals that have come today. And he's, you know, for, you know, for what it's worth, Rue is very aware of this is a different kind of call. This is, you know, there's this a sacredness here today. So thank you, Ruth. So let's get you to sleep. So hold on for one second. Actually, while I'll be able to hear you mm -hmm. while I'm in the other room. Actually, no, we're going to hold that. Oh, yes, we'll go there. And then I want to double back to my, my three pets for just one brief moment. Yeah. But there's a question that often comes up. Is there really a rainbow bridge? 
And if so, what is it? And now I'm going to have Rue go to bed. Good night, Rue. As Michael exits the room on that question, what a, like, let me just drop a rainbow bridge bomb and, and leave. My experience is that there's always talk of the rainbow bridge. There's all, always, you know, they're crossing the bridge. They'll be on the bridge. They'll meet us on the other side of the bridge. A part of me very, very strongly believes that that's something that we had to create in order to understand how they go and, and where are they going and that there must be this bridge that, that connects the two realms that we are in. And so on some level, is there a bridge that appears when I do my meditation? Very often when I sit in meditation and, and I see them coming towards me, I do see the bridge appear. So whether that is just a construct of our minds who understand where they go or whether there truly is this beautiful energetic bridge, it's just there. It's, it's, it's always comes up into the conversation and I always use the bridge. They always say, I'll be on the bridge. I'll see you on the bridge. Or today I had a conversation with someone and they were crossing the bridge. So, yes. Okay, we're going to come back to the bridge in a little bit. There are three pets. We're going to talk about them later on. We're going to, we're going to do a brief brief channeling with them. But one of them, I've got to be honest, Pumpkin, um, still this many years later, fear isn't the right word, but there's something blocking me from reaching out, if that makes any sense at all. And I'm guessing that we all have this challenge sometimes where there's someone that's so special and so sacred, we're almost afraid to try to reach out to them. So pumpkin is so interesting, Michael. And, and I, I pulled up pump, pumpkin's um, picture that you sent me, but um, the block is real. The block, Michael, is grief. And one of the greatest one of the greatest things that shows up when I when I go to do my calls with people, especially on this subject, is is like I I've said the frustration that they can't feel them, that they and like you said, almost that like fear of connecting because there's a knowing on some level that it might hurt too much, that it might hurt too much not to be. To be able to not to be able to hold that body that we we love, you know, that they're so they're so easy about leaving behind their vessels and their bodies because they're already spirit. But for us, it's that there's just an, a love of that energy we feel. So the block is grief, and grief in its in its infancy or in its beginning, you know, when, when grief is fresh and grief is new, it almost feels like I'm trying to maneuver through like a weighted blanket around you or a heavy, a heavy, heavy, heavy protection around you. And, and I, and I, this came up really clearly for me a long, long time ago, years and years ago, communicating with a woman who had who had actually lost her son, which was very, very sad. And, and we communicated with him for about three or four years before one day she just her almost an anger came out of her about why can you see him and why can't I? He was my son. And and and, and he and I asked him and he said, because I can't get through the grief, because I can't get through that heaviness. And he said, Ma, when you, when the, when the coat comes off, I promise you're going to hear me. And so in the midst of this loss, she had adopted this adorable little dog who became her absolute, absolute love of her life. And so for eight more years, we have him with us. And, and I get a call one day and it's that the worst call we can get because he is now also crossing. And in this space and in that, that energy of like, how do you do it again? How do you do it again? 
because this dog had also become almost the energy of her son, almost like that, that foster energy of her son. And so as we, as he crossed and, you know, and, and, and giving her as much support as I could thinking kind of with her, how do you do this twice? How do you go through this again? And, and as her, as her boy, her second boy was crossing, he said, tell her, we will come to her, tell her we have a gift. So I told her, and I didn't know what it was, Michael. And she called me less than a day later and said, she had gone to sleep the night he had died. And she had a dream of her son turning to look at her and in his arms was the dog. And from that moment, for whatever reason, she has always now been able to communicate, get messages, get advice, and, they, and she knows they're together. <laughs> how do we, how do we, oh gosh. How do we move past the grief when it's so strong, when we have such a pull on our heart that I need to connect with them, I need to hear from them, I need to know they're all right? We have to be willing to let go of the, the monkey mind. We have to be willing to drop into the place that feels that where we're feeling the pain. We have to be willing to let go of the stories that sometimes we're creating about why we can't. I mean, even that alone is on some levels a story. You know, I can't connect is very often I'm not ready or I won't or or I don't believe I can. So one of the things that I often teach is the great silencer of connection is doubt. And so part of it is finding a way to free yourself of your doubt to embrace the, the knowing that you are capable of, of connecting. And so one of the things I, I tell people, and so, so one of the things I talk about a lot is that there's a lot of people, you know, that have their ways of connecting with the other side. And, and I don't think there's any cookie cutter way. I think it's very unique to each person. So I, you know, I tend to teach very unique paths. But I always think about it like making a call, like it's making the call. And when we get ready to make a call, the first thing we do is, is we know who we're calling. You know, we're not just arbitrarily dialing random numbers. We know who we're calling. So we set the intention of pumpkin, I'm gonna call you. And, and we go to dial the number. And in, in the moment when you're dialing that number, that's when I tell people, drop into your meditation or connect with that. I always connect with the energy of a, of a beautiful, bright white source energy light. And I can often feel the colors of the different beings in there and I can, I can extract who it is, but we're making the call. And so when the call goes through, sometimes it's an instant connection. They pick up right away and you have a conversation and it's wonderful. But more often than not, for most of us, because of the grief and because of the doubt, it rings and it rings and it rings and there's no, and there's no answer. And so what would we do in real life if we are really truly making a call? We would leave a message. And so I often say to people, mm -hmm. leave a message. Say to them, hey, I really miss you. And I really, really love you. And I was just wondering what you might be doing. And I wanted to talk to you. So, um, hey, call me back when you get a second. And in that moment, go do something. Get out of that. Because what, what's, what's blocking us, again, that monkey mind, that, that analytical, I don't think this is right. I don't feel anything. I, I feel my, you know, like we, we get all befuddled yeah. with the ego coming in. So when you ask for a message, leave a message. The messages are amazing. Go on. Well, is a question I was going to ask, and I see that it even came up from, uh, uh, oh, I think it came up from Karen M as well. But it, 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 so it's, and you've called it the number one question that people ask. 
I'm afraid this isn't me would, would, would pumpkin would my kiddos are not, not afraid of this, but the number one thing that people say is I'm afraid of connecting with my loved one, my pet, my twin flame, my whoever, because I'm afraid they're angry with me. They're upset with me. They won't forgive me for how I let them go or what happened at the vet or anything and that they want nothing to do with me. Now I'm going to cry. <laughs> I know because it's never, it's true. not even my tears, right? It, it, oh, that's the, that's the space of this energy, which is why we went to bed. But again, in my experience, because the question comes up so much, are they mad at me? You know, either people are out of town and they miss it. Maybe there was an accident because they accidentally let them out of the house or the gate or maybe it was just because they had to make the choice to let them go. And, and, I, and, and in that moment of having to make the decision, you know, I was talking with my, my client today about that moment that comes and it's, you know, vet, vets love to say, of course, let me know when you're ready, you know, tell me when you're ready. And, and I always say to people and myself, I will never be ready. I'll never be ready, but I'll be there when it's right. And there's a lot to this question, Michael. There's a, there's a lot, like you said, we could go so many ways because the first thing that comes in is you may think that it's you making this decision, but I tell probably everybody that calls me in this moment, you didn't make this call, your pet did. You know, they'll, they'll, because they always say to me, I just, all of a sudden I had this urge to call you. You know, I, I just, I just knew and I'll say to them, because they need me to help you understand that this is a gift. It's quite possibly one of the greatest, most unconditional gifts that we can give to our pets when they've reached the end of their, their living body lives and their souls are longing to go home. It's the greatest gift we can give them to ease them from that suffering. Because out in the wild, you know, when we, when, when I, when I connect with the, the animals in the wild, it's such a sacred space. There's, it's so different from the energy with our domestic animals because there's no story. It's the, it's the cycle of life. It's nature. And, you know, they, they have their own process of, of pulling away from their herds or their, their, their tribes to go off and to curl up and to let soul leave their body. Our domestic animals, because they're so deeply loved, are supported, you know, we feed them and, and we give them water and, and, and we really support their bodies for so long that at some point we really have to honor the, the beauty of the passing of, of physical to spiritual. And it, it's the gift we give them. And so I've, I've never, in my experience, encountered animosity. And again, for, for all of us that feel that way, for all of us that think just one more day, should it been one more day? It's tell everybody, you're going to have this. This is going to happen. You're going to get a day down the road or a week down the road. And all of a sudden it starts, that part of us says, what if I had had one more day? What if I made a mistake? What the what if, what if, what if? It's such a waste of not just our time and 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 our emotion, but it's such a waste of our of our memory with them. It's it's such a, a waste of what we got to do with them. To when, think that. when our kitty uh, Bam Bam, that's the name yeah. was Bammy. When when Bammy crossed over, we don't know if it was a car, we don't know if yeah. it was a horse. Yep. We we're at one last farmer's market that we were, yeah. of all things, selling kombucha <laughs> on, right. on Maui. And we came home and and I knew, I knew when I got there and I ran down to the neighbor's house. I hadn't even gone in the house and I just knew. Um, I told Jessica, um, and, and maybe I meant it more for myself, I can't afford to go down that road mm -hmm. of kicking myself because there's only one logical conclusion and it ain't a pretty one. And I stop myself cold from that. Absolutely. Because we have destiny. It's, it's, <laughs> it's going to sound funny to say this, but it's, it's sort of none of our business, the why and the, 
you know, should I have done this? There is, I believe, a divine path or plan or or what have you for our lives. And and I and and I, I call this oftentimes the great mystery of, you know, what what are we? I I believe on the other side that there's a great understanding that once you know there will be complete understanding and, and complete awareness and that actually and this comes up a lot as well that we're the ones that that suffer you know bam bam bammy you know and he he act you know as you feel his energy see me feeling like i'm shifting around because he he really is a big presence like he kind of is like in the screen as he's coming in because um but you know, well, he, you know how he got that name. Because what he, doesn't he did he bam on things? He would hit his head into you for love. He yes. would hit his head into the door yes. to go through. He was always bamming when he passed away, whatever it was, it was the head. It was he's yeah. always was bamming his, his presence in. Yep. You will give me love. Just you now. will give me love. Right? That was that whole like I literally felt him do that kind of push <laughs> over as he's getting making sure he's in the screen. You know, he was your partner in crime. And, you know, Michael, there is such an energy about B Bammy and, and even Rue. You know, they are so much like you. They, they're going to live. They're going to live. And they're going to use all of it. And one of the things that Bammy says is uh, he wants you to know he used all of it. He used all of it. You know, he didn't miss a single second with you. Um, and... He wants you to know also that it wasn't at all. It was at, he was, he was um, minding his own business. But I think what he means is he was, you know, he was either stalking or very curious about something. And all of a sudden he could see you and he could see the light. And it was this amazingly different energy vibration. And to this day, he is like, what happened? And, and so, and, and that's always surprising to me that they don't know all the time, but it was that, that quick. And he thinks it was a, a bike Wow, for what it's worth. Yeah. He, thinks it was he, a he, bike. he would, he would run outside. He would run in between the legs of horses and, yeah. and, he, and we'd be going, Oh my God. <laughs> but we, right? we didn't feel we could bring him in. Like say, you must stay inside. Cause that no. wasn't his spirit. Oh no. I mean that, that and there's no pun intended for real that's a fate worse than death for him mm -hmm. and for actually a lot of them um some of them though being inside and knowing that they're humans um really don't want them out there because it is dangerous many of them feel so much you know like oh well you know i'm i'm perfect and i'm beautiful and i'm royal and i stay in the house you know but but not somebody like bam bam he was mm -hmm. he was outdoors and he was when you speak of, and, and I've got another important question here, but when you speak of, of twin flames, Jessica will say to this day um, that he, 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 not me, was the it's, first love of her life. And I 100% understand that. You know, the minute you say this, and this is weird, I feel like almost this is, has come in before, but the minute you say that, and this is wild because they take on different forms, you know, I feel like if... Bam Bam had been in person form with Jessica and flirting with her. He'd have on that leather jacket with that, you know, the collar up and, you know, playing that bad boy image with that teddy bear inside. Okay. So let's go there for a second. Yeah. I really want to get to reincarnation. So everybody, we're about to get to reincarnation. And I want to double back on how we can each do this. So we're going to get some more how to's here, everyone. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, we had a, um, a ceremony with a shaman and, um, <laughs> I can still see him. He was in a spacecraft, in a spacesuit, but with like Snoopy like leather goggles on. Bam, bam. Yeah. <laughs> what in the world was going on? Are our animals often from other planets? <laughs> You know, Michael, you ask the best questions and you ask the questions that I always, when things happen and I think, I'm just going to go with it because I very often will be doing a reading 
and I know I can feel my people that, that connect with this and we've had this happen where all of a sudden the energy I am connected to is beyond anything I have ever experienced or imagined. And, and the, the, the messages that come in often are very, um, <laughs> important. They're imperative. And that's when I feel like, yes, there is, sorry, there it's coming in. So I had connected with, a, um, some clients and I have made a commitment to give the reading I receive because it's no, you're right. I guess if you're going to yeah. think I'm right. So these, <laughs> these wonderful women had lost their cat. They'll, if they're listening, they'll know. And they had lost their, their cat in a fire. Their house had exploded. And when, but, and I didn't know any of this before we started the call and their cat told me that he, his people had come back for him. And that he had borrowed a cat body to come into this world and have this crazy experience because he wasn't allowed to. He was this rogue alien being that had snuck away, so cool. borrowed a cat body. And I am telling these women this story and I am thinking they are going to hang up the phone. And they <laughs> said, we knew it. That's why I tell you I am. I am only the great validator. All I do is validate what people know. And they sent me after our call, picture after picture after picture of all the UFO activity over their home after <laughs> it blew up. And they have pictures of the spaceships in <laughs> above their home. It was, it blew my mind. And so that's my main experience of. You know, I don't know. I don't know about Michael. Do they reincarnate and 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 become that? I think it's the opposite. I think that they're already out there borrowing bodies. I don't even know where to go from that. I the don't, the I zombie don't pet story for the evening. I don't no, either. we're not going there. All right. Since we talked about reincarnation, we'll go there with reincarnation. That's another one of the uh, of the big blockages or something is, oh, well, it's been too long. I can't reach out to my pet. Chances are they're already back here. I missed my opportunity. The other million dollar question, and this is also the, the rabbit hole of quantum physics. So in this space, because I have often grappled with this same, um, this same question because I will be having a communication, a connection with somebody's loved one on the other side, giving messages and also having an equal conversation with the brand new baby, you know? And so I'm, I'm going to jump out of the animal realm for just a second to someone whose grandfather had passed and years later, their son, their son grew up and um, came, came in with a picture and said, how did you get this picture of me? And it was a picture of her grandfather. So, but we were talking to them both at the same time. So when I channeled with my, my beings and my guides and I asked them the same question, what's going on? It was the most beautiful um, picture that they showed me. It's not reincarnation, it's incarnation. So on some level, I see this, this energy of when, when souls cross, it's every, you know, I, I don't even know if it is talking every now and or then, but it's, I've seen the energy of like, like confetti. I don't even know how to explain it, but like energy dropping and droplets dropping mm -hmm. in as incarnation. So it's dual reality and it's quantum physics. And I missed that class. <laughs> I think you did beautifully. So that makes me ask, and I know this is a question that Jessica didn't put here. And, and because of where we are in the, in the timeline of kids in our lives, who knows who's going to come through, but we had always talked in the past 
about calling Bammy in like as a little boy. Does that happen with pets? And again, here we are in the realm of, of free will and choice. And, and what is the mystery of the experience on that other side of the bridge? So again, in my, in my experience and my understanding, there is a moment when there is a decision. And I, like I said, with my, with my, my boy Chester, when I said, you know, you've got to come back to me. And he was like, I'm going to ascend to the master level. You know, is that possible to say, come back, let, let us be, you know, come back to us. Michael, the best, if, 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 have you ever read um, Destiny of Souls or Journey of Souls? I may have. It's very familiar. Okay. Forgive me. There, so many books. So just for right everybody. Now. Of course, that's exactly how I am. But uh, just to your question, I feel like this answer is much more eloquently um, explained in um, Destiny of Souls. But there is a moment when there is choice. And, and, but I also believe that our lifetimes are based very much around the evolution of our souls and the experiences of our lives now are for our souls to evolve. So I think in that moment of asking that, we've also got to consider that this soul that we love so much doesn't belong to us. And so we have to honor their journey. And so have I communicated with, with animals that, or with you know animals back in other animal bodies? A hundred percent, absolutely. I have even communicated with, with, with people that were often beloved pets in somebody's childhood. So that's the mystery of it. There was an interesting question that came through earlier. And, and while this, I want to honor this question because it's been such a common belief that I've heard from people growing up and you're, I, I can, I can see you're in Colorado and, and I can see you're probably like five minutes from where I used to live in Fort Collins is my guess. On and, I wish you and, still lived here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I had a dear friend in Colorado Springs, an amazing, very intelligent gentleman who said that, I mean, and he was very loving and kind to his dog, but he said that animals can't have spirits. Only humans can have spirits. So I, I don't even heard, know how to phrase it as a question, I but heard, I did see it no, come I through know the what chat. It is, right? What I just heard was, just wait till you get here. <laughs> That's all I literally just heard. <laughs> just wait till you get here. You know, it, and I, and, 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 you know, I really respect and honor the different, the different um, beliefs that, that we have and our different religious um, doctrines. And, you know, I always kind of say to people, you do what works for you, you know, in this lifetime, you know, we we're we're working with our beliefs and for whatever reasons they are, Michael, right? But, and again, with all due respect to your gentleman friend, that is not my experience. And that is not the experience of the thousands and thousands and thousands of people who not just connect and hear, but see them. And if, and if I, if I could, you know, I would, I would show you the picture after picture after picture I have of people actually catching the image of their loved ones on film. It's one of my, when I say to people, pay attention. Oh, I've so Tell many of them. Tell me more. I have so many of these. I have so many of these. And, and, and one of, you know, one of the things I tell people all the time is pay attention to signs. Your pets will leave you signs. They will try as hard as they can to get through the denseness of the grief, to get past our self-doubt, to, to whap the monkey man mind out of your head and show you. So it's often through signs, photographs and orbs in photos are the, are the easiest. And you know, the, the, the caveat I have is our iPhones like to put little blue dots now 
in pictures and people get very excited and look at the blue dot and it's that's the iPhone. But when you get fractions of light, oh, I wish I could share my screen. And, and, and have you, you saw Hannah Bear earlier. You do know what's right. on her, her her hand, right? No. Wait, do I? Mm. Don't I know this? So after Miraku passed, yes, we were seeing blue orbs everywhere. And Hannah Bear was born with a blue orb on her hand. It's still That's, there. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Because, you know, they were holding hands. We did talk about that. They Because, you know, they're... There will always be that them holding hands together, and Mirak who will always have Hannah's hand. Hannah's hand. It's fun so that, to hear her doing. I want to get back to this, but we can yeah, hear yeah, her now. We'll wake up at times, and she'll be having a talking. conversation, looking up and just one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And they are talking, and they're laughing, and Miraku is sharing her experience, and Hannah is sharing hers, and it's on such a level we can't even understand. That is why, again, I always say children and animals are so much farther ascended than us because they're just connected. There's no, there's no story blocking them, mm -hmm. you know. And so there's that place of like looking in your pictures. You're gonna see your, you're gonna see them. So what are we seeing? We're seeing a soul. That's a soul. Thank you. Can you take us through now, pe people? We've we've been we've been winding this beautiful serpentine journey, and these questions are amazing. And I want to keep going, keep going, and take so many people's questions here. We were talking about it a little earlier, and you're giving them some uh, us some ideas. And you said it's unique. Everybody's an N of one. Everybody's different. But are there some basics that we can follow to begin communicating with our pets, or some basic steps we can start with? Absolutely. When the, my favorite, like we talked about earlier is, is placing the call. And when you place the call, oftentimes, you know, and you say, you know, call me back or whatever. Meditation is one of obviously the greatest ways to, to connect and make yourself available because we want to be available to the messages that are going to come through. And again, here's where it might be different for one person as it is for another. So one of your greatest gifts, which is automatic writing, one of the greatest things is to sit with a journal in your lap and put yeah. your pen on that paper and connect, whether it's through the call or through your heart. I often will presence myself, whether even if it's my own animal that's passed on, I very often will hold a, a, a photo of them or you know, Chester forever, I would hold his collar um, favorite toys, you know, very often you use psychometry, you know, you, you use the object to connect, but start writing, start journaling, because all of a sudden in that journaling, they're going to come in and they're going to start having that conversation with you. So that's, that's a, that's one way. The other way, um, a lot of the, the different ways is to send out your requ request, you know, you know, call me, leave me a message. And I tell people, go for a walk, go for a drive, go to the grocery store, because often we'll be stopped in traffic and a song will come on the radio and it will be that song. And in that moment, they know. I have a, I have to tell one of my most outrageous stories of finding signs because the monkey mind likes to say, this is the sign. It'll be a penny. You know, this is also why we dismiss signs. People will dismiss pennies or feathers or, and they're all signs, but I like to make it a little more difficult <laughs> with my loved ones. I'm like, don't leave a penny. I'll, I'll. And I'll if you're in this household, nothing. leaving a feather, forget about it. <laughs> exactly. Right. You're going you're gonna to be like, look, angels, Jessica, angels <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> And so Rue would like you to know they are angels everywhere. So I had a, um, I had a dog that I, I joked that I took him on as my foster dog and I fostered him for 14 years <laughs> and he was my 14 year foster dog. But when yeah. he crossed to the end, he was a hero. And the night before he, the night before he, he crossed, he was adamant to get out, adamant to go outside and it was about 1 2 o'clock in the morning. And I 
I let him out. And it was such a shock because he hadn't really been up. He was, he was definitely sick and he was definitely getting ready to, to die. And within about a minute, I hear this ruckus. I race outside. He's got a skunk in his mouth and it is game on. And he, I, the skunk flees that way. I grab him in my hand and <laughs> in my oh, arms. No. Oh, and I, you know, at 2.30 in the morning. Well, that's humor. Not, There's humor in there. Oh, there has to be. Oh, there, wait, this is, you know, 2.30 in the morning, you know, you're trying, I'm trying to bathe my dying dog and I can't be mad at him, which is the whole like, oh no. And, and, you know, and so the, in the morning I called the vet and I said, so we've had an addition to the day-to-day. -day. We smell really, really, really bad. And they didn't care and come in. And, and you know, and so as he crossed over, his, that smell lingered with us for weeks. I smelled so bad, Michael, for, I'm telling you, at least three weeks. And people were really kind about it. They'd kind of like <laughs> move a little over. So my daughter, my teenage daughter said, to me. So I suppose every time you smell a skunk, you're going to think it's otter. And I was like, maybe I'm, you know, that could be. And, and I was thinking, well, that is true. Like, I don't want to think that every time I smell a skunk, but I let it go. And about, I don't know how long later, Michael, a month later, six weeks later, I'm on our regular walk that we, we always did the loop. And as we're coming up, then the neighbors were putting their cows out into pasture for the summer. And off the trailer came a black cow with a white stripe that went all the way from its nose down its back to the tip of its tail. And I stood there and this was skunk the walk cow. I did every <laughs> skunk cow. And I named it skunk cow. Hi, skunk cow every day. So one day I'm walking and my monkey mind kicks in because even I do this and I'm thinking, I mean, there's probably a lot of cows that have a, a big white stripe. And I said, otter. Are you really that skunk cow? And I tripped right in that moment. I tripped. I turned and I was like, what did I trip on? It was this giant black rock with a white stripe down the center of the oh. rock. And I was like, I'll leave you alone. I believe you. So when I talk to people and I say to them, go out and, and pay attention. If do you trip, does the temperature in the room change? So I was talking with a really good friend of mine today and she said, remember when her, her beloved horse had passed um, in the barn. And she said, do you remember when it got so cold? You know, we were, we were connecting with him and it was ice cold. So notice if the temperature changes, hot, cold, notice if you feel a breeze where there shouldn't be a breeze. Um, they will go out of their way to get your attention. And the, the signs will, I'm trying to say, I was going to say will be obvious, but sometimes easy to step over. So when you're trying to connect with your pet, um, you know, do your automatic writing, put out your request, leave a message and then say, call me back and pay attention. How do we know? Thank you so much. And I will forever think of skunk cow now. Actually, it, it, it reminds me of pumpkin and sour. We'll get there in a few minutes. But there was one day they're running down the trail and uh, sour bolted one way. I think she had gotten off leash because she wasn't the regular off leash dog. And, and pumpkin's a koi dog. She was smarter than any 10 me's put together. She was off the other direction. And sour got messed up with a skunk and came back and coming running down the trail was pumpkin leaping and jumping over it like log ties that were like water barriers on the trail, laughing her tail off. So funny that her sister got sprayed. Of course, so. because I think she set her up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, that, right? that would have been her. That would have been pumpkin. Right? How do we know it's not our ego? How do we know when we get signs, when we get symbols, when we hear things that oh, I must have just made that up? Well, that's the, that's that's what we're talking about with that monkey mind and with the doubt and the and the the willingness to to let go of doubt. So, the one of the biggest what makes it tricky to receive messages is because messages come in our own voice. You know, we 
you know, when, when, when we go to connect, we, I think on, on many levels, we think we're going to hear, I don't know what, some booming voice or some, you know, and you, and you might, but for the most part, we're hearing our own voice. And so the minute we hear it, we just, we just dismiss it. So what I will say to people in that moment is, is that actually something you would have said? Now, yes, if it is, if you hear, I love you. Of course, our brain is going to say, I'm just saying that. But are you? Because you, it's the feeling you get with it. So this is going to be the weirdest thing that just came in is that the ego can't feel. The, e the ego doesn't feel. So like the tears we've already had today and, and like that, that, that feeling we have of like, I miss you. I love you. I'm not mad at you. The minute that tear comes in, the minute you feel that your heart clench, that is not ego because ego doesn't feel. I love it. Yeah. And it's, it's again, getting to the energy behind it. What is the energy behind what I just tripped into skunk rock? <laughs> I just, right? What is the energy? What behind is, it? So that also is another, you're asking all the questions I've already, thank God asked myself, because it, what, what is that energy? How my biggest question that I've always asked is, is how, you know, how, how do you um, hide hide a necklace or hide a ring. I have a, a dear, dear client that was missing her wedding ring. And it was, you know, there was, you know, was it stolen? Did we leave it at the hotel? You know, devastated. And I kept saying, they've moved it. They've moved it. We've, we, you need to put out an offering. You need to put out an offering. And she, you know, even I sometimes are like, I don't know, try it. I, it's all a mystery. And sure enough, you know, putting out the offering, I, I got a text one day on my phone and it was her wedding ring. And it was on top of her, it was in her jewelry box on top of all the jewelry, right? So I can't answer the what is it or the hows because I do I, I very much understand and honor the mystery of so much of this. I was contemplating this recently about, I have a feeling that we on this earthly plane accessing fifth dimension, I feel like there's so much we don't know. Like, I feel like here's the tip of the iceberg, but what we don't know is vast. So I don't, I don't know. We'll go back to quantum. They collapsed the particle back into a wave. They moved it to where they nodded, needed it to, and then they turned it back into a particle. See, easy. <laughs> I can't even bake a cake, Michael. I don't even know <laughs> they would do that. I just, I just turned up the, the volume on the mic. He's gone quiet now. Lumi has been going nuts the last five or 10 minutes. And, and, and so I, I, I just turned up the volume now. He's gone quiet, of course. But maybe that's a sign that we've got spirit banging on the door, spirits banging on the door. And before we go to people's questions here, uh, would you mind plugging into Bammy or Pumpkin or Sour or whoever wants to come through um, I gave you the photos earlier today because yep. you like working with having those photos in I hand, I believe. I do. I love, you know, I really love the the physical connection of a photo. I, I of course, can connect at any time without photos. I do it all day long mm -hmm. um, with clients by phone, but there's just an essence that we capture. And um, so first off, and, you know, that's why Lumi's on the door because, Lumi's spirit family has been patiently waiting because, <laughs> because one of the, uh, <laughs> because when I, when I started the reading earlier, you know, when I, when I connected with Pumpkin and Sawa and, and, and Bam Bam, you know, they've now been waiting. It's sort of like I called, them, <laughs> right. Sorry, guys. And I said, and I said, Hey, you know, we're going to be on this and I, you know, put them on hold. And I think they've been waiting. So when, you know, <sighs> I'm just getting them in order because they're all a little bit like who's the most important one and who do you most want to hear from and pumpkin is like it was you were partners in crime um she was 
so was pumpkin a, a coyote was pumpkin um right so pumpkin yeah, you, was a coyote that's right uh hybrid had, but may, hybrid. more coyote right. than not so yeah. I, i'm obviously going to put up the picture here and she looks okay. like a, a small coyote and you can actually see kind of her fur shaved in places because she was also a, a cancer survivor for a decade yeah yeah. So I mean, yeah. Uh, she was a patch quilt, but she was she was coyote. And, and, and one day she actually wandered off into the hills where there are coyotes hills away, like in the background behind you there. And I'm going, oh, God, no, because they were like, come on over for dinner. And then the coyotes are like and, and she's like, well, what's for dinner? And they're like, you. And, and I had to go out there. Thankfully, they were trying to take her down. Yeah. And I actually looked a pack of coyotes in the eye and I said, I'm sorry, we're in your space. You that way, let pumpkin go this way. And they yeah. did. And she did. Because she she was thinking I'm going home to my homies right. here just to say hi. Absolutely. But they, Michael, that's the presence of you. And that was you being very clear. I mean, in that moment, it was almost like channeling the wrath of God if you come after my girl, you know. And so there's that energy. And it's sort of funny. Pumpkin has this, um, there's this moment of her. Oh, see, it's good. I'm getting all the electric shocks. But there's this moment of her saying, I made the decision, like, you know, she's having this moment of like almost embarrassment about, I was fine. You know, I was fine, dad. Um, you, she says it's that, that, that wild um, coyote and um, DNA that kept her so healthy. I mean, cancer, cancer was, cancer wasn't a thing for her. It was a thing that vets found. And it was a thing that, um, she said made everybody worried, but as far as she went, it didn't stop her mm -hmm. until, until her body, until she had used every ounce of her body and, and, and needed to be able to um, fly with you in spirit form is how she's saying now. And the, but Michael, the big thing that came in today when I was connecting with them, it was Sawa's energy. And there was such a beauty of this girl. When I asked her, you know, to describe her life, she said, although Jessica and Michael have wonderful mothers, I mothered them. Like she, there's a sense of maternal energy around you of, of keeping you she, together. So... Sawa was a, a Brittany. She was a rescue dog. She had been given away to, she was, when I, when I had horses, she was chained up where I had the horses and given away to one person who would then fire a gun because she was supposed to be a hunting dog and she would run away to another person. She literally, I believe, once ran across the Kansas border running away from that. And I had asked to adopt her and was told no until finally I got the call in the middle of one night, said, take her or we shoot her. And she became mine and she was so scared and she would, she would run away, thunderstorms, wear the thunder shirt, break through the, the yeah. screen and run away. But then when Jessica came into my life, she said, have you ever noticed Sawa's ears? I'm like, what do you mean? And she goes, well, how are you feeling right now? And I'm like, well, actually I'm a mess. My blood sugar has crashed. And Sawa's ears are going <laughs> like this. <laughs> and yeah. Sawa's totally misbehaving. And we realized that she was so sensitive and attuned to me that yeah. she was watching my blood sugar levels and she became a registered service dog whose job was to watch after me. That is it. That's the mother in you. And she said, and Lumi is so funny. I just, but she <laughs> said to me, um, I mothered that boy. I mothered that boy because God knows you would forget to take care of yourself, Michael. And that's how, how she says it. She, she would put her brakes on. You'd be in the middle. Yeah. We were walking in Silverthorn. We're walking in the middle of Silverthorn. My blood sugar levels go down. And when they go down, I'm in, I, I, I've healed from that. But when they would go down, I would say, no, no, I'm fine. And I would truly believe I'm fine. And I'm like ready to hit the deck. And yeah. she, I can remember, we're going past all these storefronts. And she went, Ert! and hit the brakes and wouldn't take another step. It's just like looking at me. <laughs> Don't Stop you and get it? <laughs> Stop and eat. She, uh, she said that um, I'm looking, I actually, so I, I did my automatic writing with her and um, she said it was always her you turned to when it, when it wasn't rainbows and unicorns. 
and that she nursed you back to health every single time. Her crossing of all of them was the most sacred, she says. Um, was there a candle lit or was there something about candles with her? Well, it, so hers may have been sacred for her. For me, it was the most uh, pumpkin we had transitioned by being out in the grass. She played with the grasshoppers that day. She was literally walking with the grasshoppers. Actually, she had us go to town in Boulder a day before, and we ended up at a concert. She managed to walk across the street and took us to a concert where they were singing, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And she just sat there and heard it and then took us back to the car with... And, and she wanted to be outside on the earth and she transitioned two nights later on the earth. When we fell asleep for a brief moment, she checked out. With Sawa, it was, it was an experience that I think took two ceremonies with shaman before I could finally heal from it. Um, and was the most, I had a hard time letting go with both of them. I had such a hard time. Um, I cannot even begin to describe how hard of a time, but with Sawa passing, um, man, I'm okay with it now. And, and I, I, I don't like, I was talking about to people last week about sharing my NDE experiences. I don't like to go back to the traumatic events, but she, it was well past her time and she was hanging in there and we were feeding her with a syringe. And, and, and even right before she passed, we went to a, um, we were in New Jersey, what was it, a corn maze. And she guided us through the corn maze, even in, on her last days. And then she had, I think, one or two tick bites that helped her to transition. Yep. And here I am this day, um, her fever is going up. I'm throwing ice on her. I'm taking her temperature again. It's going too low. I'm warming her up. I'm manually trying to keep her alive. And... I fell apart after that experience. I mean, totally fell apart. I'm the guy who went back to the refrigerator, forgive me everybody, at the vet place and was, had to see her again of and course. was just a mess. And then in ceremony, fell apart and the poor shaman trying to put me back together um, because of that sacred connection and like other people are experiencing, the guilt of why couldn't I save her? Why couldn't I have done it differently? Why did I torture her at the end? So it may have been ceremony for her, the amount of love I was pouring on her That's or it. sacred. For me, it was the most horrific of experience. Of course, because it was a, it was a ripping of a seam. Oh, you can hear Lumi going Lumi nuts now. Lumi wants in so bad. You know, because I always talk to Lumi is like wants a part of this. So, I mean. It's, so, we'll take people's questions later wild. and then we'll come back. We'll come back to Lumi we'll before the end. So, we Lumi. will respect Lumi. I told I told Lumi, like, let's do this off air. But Sawa, so this is, so it makes sense, the candle, um, why I, I saw candles. It was partly the fever, but it was there was this thing that she's showing me about being a candle and that her, her life force just would burn and burn and burn. And that in that, in those final moments, it was like that, that surge that a candle has right before it goes out. And that was, that was everything you were feeling. And it's that part for us, that separation from that physical form for us is so real. It's so visceral, but for them, it's almost like, it's almost like even a deeper connection because their souls can blend, you know, and I feel, especially with Sawa, and that's why I was saying there was such a sacredness to her passing because I do, when I feel Bammy, I feel like, you know, Bammy, I do believe Bammy came right back in. I feel like pumpkin's energy is also very, very present. But with Sawa, the sacredness of it is, I feel like Michael, she she infused within your soul. And that, yes, go on. <laughs> I couldn't lead the witness. Holy shit. Forgive me, everybody. Holy shit. Um, so I don't try to write to Sawa. And the reason I don't try to write to, and I'm scared to write to Pumpkin and, and Bammy, I just know he's, he's doing his thing. But 
what I got out of out of a ceremony once, then a second time. And if I ever try to reach her without even words, what I get is, why are you trying to reach? Why are you trying to reach me? I'm you. I'm within you. I am I a am. part of you. I am a part of your fabric of your beingness now is what I get. And you just said that, which is freaky tiki. <laughs> <laughs> I am your animal communicator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you are. There's this merging and it's that it's that heart beating now as one. And so that's why so many of these questions is is the is the quantum physics is the fifth dimension, because where why can they be everywhere all at once and be infused and be incarnated? There's so much, I believe, that we don't really understand. But Sawa and you know her i in this the other big piece that came through with her her connection was how much she protects and takes care of both of these babies of yours on both sides sawa is with both of them all of the time and i see her very often um even now sitting with her i can feel her um connection with miraku you know almost as if miraku has has Sawa's energy with her as well. So she she was a force to be reckoned with. Sawa, all of them are um, yours um, because Pumpkin keeps kind of wanting to be like, me too, <laughs> me too. There is this very big um, message coming through with you that Pumpkin has been waiting and waiting and waiting for you to, do, to connect. You know, She's like, been telling me that recently, it, it, and mm -hmm. I, I actually mentioned it in the show recently. I'm like, wow, I feel she's telling me I need to reach out to her. I, I guess know. it's the wound healing that I haven't been willing to go there because I have the tools. I can do this. Oh, we all course. can do this. I do this. We, I was reading you a channeling of, um, from baby Hana earlier today because we can channel any spirit. Of course. But I've been afraid to. So she is waiting for me. She wants you to know it's not going to hurt anywhere near as you've been making up. She, <laughs> but she said it was. Oh, she's coyote not, energy. That's, she that's, is coyote. <laughs> I mean, I have to like give it like it is. Like give it like it is. It's not going, it's not going to hurt as much as you have been creating. Not, you know, she she's she's patiently waiting. And it will be amazing. <laughs> yep. Yep. That that coyote, um, you know, that part of her that made that choice to to choose you. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though the story is you rescued her, in that moment was still the choice. You know, there was still the choice of you. She chose you, and. Just as Sawa chose you and, and all of us here today, they, you know, we are chosen and we don't just, we don't just meet our, our animals with, with the rescues and the shelters and, and the breeders and, and the gifts we're chosen just as much. It's a, it's a union. This is as much as I can get out with it. <laughs> I know, with okay, your heart some, right there. Like, yeah. Let's let them take some other people's questions. We've been going for quite a while. So yeah. before we do that, where can yeah. people go, Megan, to find out more, to find your work, to work with you? Any any of the above. So my website's really simple. It's just uh soulspeak.biz. And it's the greatest space to connect. Um, my newsletter's about to start going out. I've got actually a couple courses that are about to be launched. And um, one of them is about, it has this included in it of, you know, how to enhance your already, um, uh, the intuition you already have. And I have a course of making a good reading great for those of all of us that are already communicators and, and working in the field. But that's the best place to reach me and connect. Soulspeak.biz. And I saw that that came up here in the chat as well. And for people watching it later on, we'll have that in the show notes as well. So right. let's thank you. So let's go to some okay. questions. Let's start with Amanda first. And, and this, is, this is the question of the evening. And she put it out there first. I'm working through tremendous guilt from having to euthanize 
my Joshua, uh, Jojo or Jojua Binks. Um, I know he's not upset with me, but how, aside from clearings, how do I get over it? I'm connecting with him right now. I think there's a much uh, deeper answer to that question because first off, you know, when he comes in, it's, you don't get over love, you know, you don't get over love. And I know the question is, how do I get over my guilt? How do I get over the, the story that I've created? And, and what I would say to Amanda is that what we want to do is, is, is break down the story. The reason it hurts is because we are meaning making machines. You know, our ego needs to make understanding of the things that we experience and go through. And so one of the things I would walk through with Amanda is breaking down the illusion of the story because that is not the story. So with JoJo's, that, that was not their story. What so what I feel in this moment is that in the moment of of it his passing, all he felt was love. Like there was nothing but love. And he said that he literally, so what I get is that either she was listening to his heart or as she held him, he could hear her heart beating. And so to transition from one aspect of deep love through the heartbeat into the heartbeat of spirit, there's nothing. It's the story that's holding the guilt. Get over the story. Get over the story. Let it go. Let's go to uh, Rocky. Do they come back to visit or stay around after passing, even if they're moving to another house? Oh, they come... I'm thinking of all the millions of, of um, stories. They, for many of them, they don't just come back to visit. They don't go anywhere in the first place. So, so Rocky, very strongly, I feel with you that you're still being um, watched over. So, um, so what I see, and forgive me, Rocky, because I think that I'm connecting with a dog body, but I always feel it. But what, how I feel is in your bedroom at the, at the base of your bed, watching you and, and, and checking out, checking out and checking out the new digs and uh, a lot of um, connection to why would you put that there when in the other place that chair didn't go there. But so I guess so, you know, forgive me because the minute we connect that, you know, they they start to come in, but they, the word visit is a, is an interesting um, word to use in this because it's, it's almost like as far as Rocky goes, there's never actually been a separation. There's just been a following like where Rocky goes, they go as well. Thank you. Um, this is uh, from Ed SK abstract art. And, and this we can take as both a general as well as a specific question, because I was asking for more general on, on our pets. But mm -hmm. um, I know that our Teddy is with us still. We are wondering if he helped uh, if uh, he helped us get our new rescue pup, Barney. We feel like we've had small signs. Today would have been the 10-year gotcha day for Ted. And, and so I guess if we took this as a general question, mm -hmm. are, they, are they pulling the strings on us? Oh, there's... One of the hardest things that comes up for me during readings is that, you know, in, in these calls and these, in these connections, as you know, we are dealing with great, great grief and, and ev not every time. In fact, it's, you know, it's, it's, this is not an everything, but I'll be in the middle of a, of a reading and they'll be saying to me, I'm sending a fluffy brown one. I'm sending a fluffy brown <laughs> one. And I, every once in a while, will be like, we have to wait till the end, right? Because it's too soon. Like it's, you know, it it, it, it oftentimes feels disrespectful. You know, we're, we're still in the story with them. But 
I have had very specific messages come into many, many readings about look for the black and white one next, or, or I had, um, I recently had a dog that had crossed over and they were saying, I'm on pet finder and you know, nothing, just <laughs> Megan, nothing. And I said, quit looking for a Weimaraner. He doesn't want to do the Weimaraner thing again. It was too crazy. And, and he was the one that said, I'm a fluffy brown one. Look for the fluffy brown one. And, and I love my clients because, you know, a week or so later, I, all, they, all I get is a picture. And it was this bear, this, I don't know, it, I think it was a Malamute, but they found the brown fluffy, the brown fluffy one. So without a doubt, and this is why Michael, and, and also for everybody with this question is because they are our guardians. You know, one of the things when I teach people in my animal communication class about, you know, one of the things that we want to connect with is what, what's their job? What's their purpose? Animals want to have a job. They want to have a purpose, um, just like humans do. Um, and so in that moment that they're crossing their true job this whole time, as we saw with Sawa, is guardian. And, and I don't mean to laugh, but they're, as they're channeling in, they're like, we know you can't do it on your own. We know you just cannot manage this on your own. And so we've got to send somebody back in our place. There's no way they're leaving us on our own unless we make a specific request. And some people do say it's our time to travel or, um, you know, for whatever the reasons are. But animals, they're, they have predecessors and they make it very clear. This this whole this whole time we're talking, I keep thinking of Sir Meowsers, and he's he's doing great. Yeah. Um. You know, he's getting up there a little bit, but uh, yeah. we'll say he's forever fifteen. There we go. And and I, what yeah. this conversation is making me want to do is just spend more time with Meowsers, is be more present with Meowsers, is take more time because he's our he's our greatest. I mean, Rue's Rue's a guardian, but Rue's Rue. Um, right. And yeah. Meowsers is the one who was on Jessica's belly during each and every pregnancy, yeah. who's been yeah. by her side. If somebody's not feeling well, he's like, oh, time to go on duty. Absolutely. I I feel um that he's he's also the one that just wrapped it up with um Lumi just now, you know, there's like, <laughs> knock it off. They're trying to have a show. Um, one of the greatest gifts, and this is the other part for those of us that feel that feel guilt when we do have to make the decision to help them, to assist them to the other side. You know, it's again, I always stress it is, it is an act of unconditional love, but, you know, oftentimes we are giving them that, that space of, of, of presence when we know it's coming. So these are the gifted days, you know, these are, these are the days that every day is a gift. And one of the things with my animals that I've had to, had to help let, and let go and assist to the other side, one of the, the greatest things is I make that day. And I know so many of us do this so amazing. You know, there's, there's a, there's a gift in the knowing one of the things that I see with those of us, you know, who have experienced loss and have welcomed new life is we start to experience anticipatory grief. And I think in that anticipatory grief, I have a, I, I, all, I should, it's actually not just one, it's all my animals. I, whenever they're kittens or puppies, I have that thought of, you know, someday this is going to hurt, you know, and, and I, and I, and I really appreciate that and, uh, and honor that part of me because that's presence. That's knowing that every single day we all spend with each other and with our yeah. pets is a gift. So yeah, he's he's saying it's okay. You don't he's good. He's not rushing along anywhere. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go to uh Janet Casimir. I've had some telepathic communication with my animals and wondered if it is an animal to if it is an animal to human or if it is spirit in between translating. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I feel so that spirit in between translating, particularly with Janet. So when I, when I feel Janet's energy come in, Janet's communicating through her particular guide. So the reason that question is so specific to Janet is because 
and and forgive me, Janet, and 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 reach out and let me know if I'm wrong, but it it just feels like Janet tends to have a little bit of that same self doubt that we do, and so she has, on some level, um, hired. I don't have a better word right now, but like um, is using a translator, mm -hmm. and and that's why she feels this inner guide. So that's why she's feeling this this um, inner guide. But my my experience has always been direct communication. You know, I feel that it's soul to soul communication and that oftentimes though other guides come in. Um, I will say that um, it happens a lot more with people, but when I'm doing communications, their guides will come in. Um, your animals guides will come in. And so all of a sudden we're having a communication with a room full of, of beings. I'm guessing that's what it's like for you tonight to an extreme. It's, it feels like heat. It's so yeah. interesting. I, it's such a, a fascinating experience, but it's, it's like, I can feel the, the, the heat, the energy. It's really amazing. Wild. So from Amanda Painter, any advice on aiding the, the grieving coping process? Um, can you repeat that question? Because I just wanted to yeah. say hi to Amanda. Uh, any advice on aiding the grieving coping process? Be very, very, very gentle with yourself. And the thing about grief and 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 the thing I tell so many people is that, you know, grief has come to comfort us. But it's it's hard to fathom because it hurts. Yeah. But I, I was just having this conversation with with someone really yesterday about, you know, grief comes in and it's like it's got every emotion on it. You know, it's got anger and it's got joy and it's got sorrow. And it's got euphoria. It's all grief. Like, you know, when they say that the, the color black is all the colors together, I feel like grief is all the emotions. And so that when we surrender into the arms of grief, when we, when we give ourselves up and, and rest in the arms of grief and let grief hold us in that moment, we will feel the joy, the memories, the, the beauty of it. Um, all of it comes through. So the 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 simple yet hard answer to that is surrender into that space of grief because what we resist persists and so the more we try to push the grief away to to numb the grief to overwork to to get busy you know what i what i notice with people is all of a sudden they'll just make themselves very very busy or or they'll pull the the covers over their heads they 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 resist the experience of feeling, but it's in that feeling that you will find the release. So it's sort of like if you don't go around, you can't go around or over, you've got to go through and you'll find the peace. Thank you. From this uh, kind of dovetails nicely, dovetail, interesting. <laughs> from <laughs> from Luffy. My good friend's cat at 19 years old passed away a few days ago. My friend is beyond grief and has stopped eating. How best to comfort her? Yeah, her friend is really has very much. Um, she's the stopped eating is just that that loss of. Of the energy of her cat um, and is, as it's coming in, she's so, um, she is going to eat again. It's actually her cat that's actually coming in because, you know, everyone is worried about her and, and everyone is, is, is trying to gather around her and support her. Um, God dang it. Her cat just said, open a can of tuna fish. Because if it was a cat, you know, cats love. She, they said, you've got to get her back to the senses. You've got to. She lit her cat literally just said, "Open a can of tuna fish," because it's the sound. It's the, it'll be the the trigger, the cue. You know, our habits are 
you know, the habit of eating it's, you know, we, we hear a cue, we hear a pop can opener. I don't even drink pop <laughs> a beer can open. We'll, we'll hear um, the rustle of a potato chip bag. We'll, we'll, we'll hear. It's almost like if, if you could be with her and just start bringing her back to the sensory um experience of it without pushing her without with just the gentleness because what i feel is that that very soon she's going to start to naturally nourish herself it's her guilt so it, it is her, her guilt is that it really is she is really struggling with this but as we gently just get her back to the sounds and the smells and and don't push her don't push her and she and she will it's in chocolate chip cookies really right out of the oven it's so <laughs> Lord, I, this is all the cat so i it's really i don't so that's really what comes through that is not just tuna and chocolate chip cookies i, I know like. right like fresh <laughs> out of the oven what's mm -hmm. what's interesting to me and we'll take a couple more questions and sorry i won't be able to get to everybody's question tonight but we'll, then we'll do a short meditation is you said we have to get them back, get her back to her senses or get people back to their senses. And I can only see a tiny bit of the chat window because I'm focused on you. But right then, as soon as you said senses, something whipped across the screen that said makes perfect sense. Right as you said senses, it said makes perfect sense. <laughs> wow. So I take that as a total synchronicity of the universe that it's the word is popping up just as you're saying it. So wild. Isn't that wild? Let's go to Elaine Brown. This is the biggie for a lot of us, or this is the question that we never want to have to ask. How do I know when it's time? My kitty talk is nearing the end. Just started chemo, another injection of prednisone. He looks better today, but is he? Can I communicate better? So in that moment, when, and especially so Elaine right now with your kitty, you know that he's doing better. So, um, so as the energy starts to come in with this, he's where you are right now, you know, he's still doing, he's still hanging in there. He's still doing well. One of the Again, the hardest things I think that people are told, the the generic answer, especially from our, our vets who, you know, love us, but is you'll know. And it's such a frustrating answer because you may know, but you don't want to know. So one of the lines of communication I like to open up with my animals is um, you let me know. You let me know. And and then trust it, Elaine. You 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 tell him, you let me know. So, um, and I wish, I wish, I wish so much that I had screenshotted this, um, this blog I had found from a holistic veterinarian who had his five rules for quality of life and how do you make the decision? And to sum it up, it was basically, do they still enjoy their food? Are they still able to get to water and, and, and drink it? Do they still play? Are they able to go outside or use their cat boxes, their, their restrooms. Um, and, and if they're dogs, do they still want to get up and go for their walks? And, and basically in, in his post, he said, if even two of those elements are missing, it's the green light of it's okay. Because the quality, you know, when we say quality of life, again, it can be what, 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 it, what even is that? Because it's going to be my quality of life and what I find, it might be very different for somebody else. And I often talk to my clients about dignity and, you know, giving them a, a death with dignity. And, and so, and again, Elaine, a very personal question for yourself and, and, and for your kitty is, what is that level of dignity? And, and I, would, I would very much trust yourself because when i feel the connection you have there truly is a moment where it will be a look and it will be a look and you will know she won't miss it and you can't get it wrong and you can't get it wrong that's the <laughs> 
that's something I've learned so well, but that's the kicker for people. Right. Because we've been told from all of our schooling, our education, right. you can't get it right. Right. And yet when you're working from a space and an energy of deep love, mm -hmm. you can't get, love doesn't get it wrong. Love doesn't get it wrong. And you're coming from love. I'm going to jump in. We've, we've really only got time for a few more questions. There, there was a, a question that came in from Kara and she just made a beautiful donation. And I'm not, I'm not, I, 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 I can't uh, jump people ahead in the queue because of donations, but I, I thank you so much, Kara. But her question actually speaks for so many of us that I have to ask this one. She wrote, how can I make amends to my Georgie and honor she was to me? I wasn't in a good place toward the end and she deserved better. Does she have any words for me? And will I meet her again in what former plane? She was a cat, by the way. And this idea of make amends yeah. is massive. Yeah. Yeah. There, and again, from my understanding and in my experience, when we and they leave behind the the 3d energy body and, and 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 ascend all is forgiven all is forgiven and that's that's really a very human you know making amends animals are unconditional love and i'll tell you that kara your your kitty georgie never had a story about you and your and your um, circumstances in the moment. Georgie wasn't attached to that story. There, your hearts were still were still in, entwined. So, although you've got this, you've got this um, this script that you keep seeing, and it's wild to see that. I don't know if you're a writer, but this script or this scene that keeps playing. It's not the it's not the experience that your kitty had. And so the literally the message I just heard was there is nothing to forgive because I love you. Love doesn't get it wrong. Thank you. And and I must say absolutely thank you Kara. Thank you Kara. Thank you Kara. So many beautiful questions. I'm trying to skim through all of them to pick out the last couple here. Here's just a fascinating question. And it was from, um, <laughs> from Lisa. And, and I experienced this from Sawa before her passing. What does a pet see when they look into space at nothing but can't break their focus. Sometimes my dog acts weird in the yard and it feels like she sees something that I don't. Oh, Lisa, they are seeing something that we don't. And so what that particular something is that your dog is seeing um, is, is their connection. What will instantly what comes in with your with your dog is that they're seeing, um, it, it, I, I, they're showing it to me, but it, it's this amazing angel. So, it, it, and so it, because this is such so specific to you, see how it all speeds up. Like there's like this energy just came in. So you, in your particular case, I feel that your, yours is sitting in the yard and is looking at this amazing, I, I can't even put it into words, this energy form, this, this angel. But it, I will tell you that I, I believe cats, I mean, cats are the biggest mediums on the planet, but I see animals and babies watch, watch things around all the time. Who are they seeing? Oftentimes they're seeing people that we loved that have passed on that are still here with us. Um, they are so in tuned to the spirit realm. I very often feel like we are just in this, this presence that if we put our hands here, we're connecting. Oh, my hand just got so cold. We're connecting here in this realm. We don't see it, 
but animals have no blinders. They have no, they don't have whatever that is that we don't see. Your, your dog is in the presence of something and is listening rapidly. I, I keep hearing the word master. So listening to somebody. Cool, cool, cool. Last two questions. And there's so many beautiful ones. I'm sorry, I can't get to all of them, everybody, but you're going to just have to go to soulspeak.biz there. Um, from Soul Puppy 87, such an important question. What happens to all the souls in shelters who are euthanized? I always imagine they're connected to me. I believe, and I have um, often been in the presence of this amazing guardian angel that when I'm in the presence of, of her, I always see her with her arms gathered around all of the shelter animals that, that end up dying without a home or without a person or without, without the love that our animals have. And I always see, because I, I volunteer at shelters all the time and, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm with these animals and I always feel and see the presence of this magnificent being who gathers up all of these animals and holds them into their heart. So those animals, they always find love. And I really believe, and this is the wildest thing coming in, that they're kind of put at the front of the line for coming back to love. And you know, we all have our own journeys and we all have our special destinies and it's such a heartbreaking, heartbreaking thing to connect with when we think about that but there's a special 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 place in the kingdom for them and and i love her for asking that question because she's part of that angelic soul thank you and and it makes me think of uh thank you so much soul puppy it makes me think of yeah. sawa staring off into space in her and her last year, she just sit in the corner in the kitchen and just stare. And, and I knew she was looking to the other side. It makes me think that, and maybe particularly those who are at the front of the line, so to speak. Um, and, and there was at least one question here about it. Forgive me for not being able to get it at, at the moment, uh, that our pets have their soul family waiting for them. That could be our higher self as part of the yes, soul family do. as well on the other side of the veil that starts to come to them and surround them with love and be with them and connect with them right. and are getting them ready and then walking them across right. the bridge so they are not alone. I have been in so many readings and in, in, in connection with so many people, you know, where I'll say, I'll be doing a reading and I'll say, who's, who's the big brown dog in the room? And they'll say, well, Gus, that's Gus, but you know, he died. He died. And, and, and I say, well, Gus has come, Gus has come. And they're waiting. When, when my mother was, was dying, um, I know for certain my grandmother was there and, and was waiting. And so they do come and they do have their own guardians. And so many times I had a dear, dear, dear friend who had to um, put her horse down and we were out in a, in a field doing, doing the reading. And he kept looking off, like he would jerk his head and look off. And in the distance, all we could see were these hills. And then all of a sudden he showed me all of the horses lined up on the ridge line of this mountain with the Native Americans sitting on top of them. And as we were talking about it, he whinnied. They are going home. And they are going to reconnect with their soul family, of which we are also a part of. Thank you. And and I want to say thank you to the, the guardians of, of the love bug and Lumi, because for the first time ever before some event last night, I ended up leaving a door open. I never, I'm neurotic about doors. I don't even understand how the door got open because I'm so neurotic. And Jessica went into the garage 
And as she closed the garage door, unable to find them, one appeared in, that was Lumi, and then Lovebug came running back in. And I'm convinced <laughs> it was a guardian scooting them in and saying, no, no, no. <laughs> Lovebug was like, don't shut the door. Don't shut the door. <laughs> I'm sorry them. I got out. I'm so <laughs> sorry I got out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was that moment where they're like, let's go outside. And they got out and they were like, we're heading back in. And there's no yeah. doubt they were being, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. The last question from Jane Seeley, and this seems somehow perfectly appropriate and so incredibly important. So thank you, Jane. When the pet, and I'm thinking of the movie, the, it's a Richard Gere movie that I haven't even seen, but I always see the see the image for this movie of a Japanese dog. When the pet loses their person and that dog like stayed by a train center hikoto oh, or something right. for like 10 years yes. when the pet loses their person and feels grief how can you comfort them if you still have access to you know personal items of the person that they lost who passed um i know a lot of people have put pajamas or robes or shirts in their beds. Um, you know, um, I have a client who um, had ashes of the owner that passed made into a trinket to wear on that they put on their um, the dog's collars. And but again, even here in this moment, there's such a connection that this is so wild. Pets don't lose their owners because they pets don't lose connection. You know, the story that, you know, we, we, we tend to, to lose connection because of grief and story. Animals don't have story. So pets don't lose connection. Um, but it is very, I mean, to even have that question come through about honoring um, the sacredness of that loss and giving back to that pet you know, they're, that they're still here and, and that they love them and taking, and taking good care of them. Thank you. The movie was Hachi. I almost Hachi. had it. Not That's going. right. Hachi. Well, what a name. So would you mind leading us in just, and first off, one more time, it's soulspeak.biz, correct? It is. So yes. everybody, I want you to visit soulspeak.biz. Would you mind, because we're really getting to the, we, we get are. to shut this down and I cannot thank you enough even just a brief moment pause. I'm not Absolutely. challenging you for a full meditation. I won't, I hear you. Thank you for the challenge, but I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to in this moment if, if it feels good for everybody to just gently close their eyes in this space, setting the intention to today honor the connection that you made with your pets because it wasn't just you who showed up here for our call today. It was all of your pets. I felt every ounce of energy from all of them here today. So in this space, if it feels good to gently close your eyes, find yourself sitting in a beautiful and magical space, perhaps a garden, perhaps a forest, perhaps a space next to water. And in this space, Find a comfortable seat and invite the energy and the essence of your beloved to come sit beside you. And notice that ahead of you is a clearing or a path or a bridge. And feel the energy as you see them coming to you. Just breathe in to what you see or what you feel. Notice how they look if you can see them or notice how they feel if you can feel them. And invite them back into your space. And in this moment, give yourself permission to tell them the one thing that you most want them to know. And in this space, 
give yourself permission to hear the one thing that you most want to know. And as you receive that, take it into your heart and know that you can never be separated, not on any realm and not in any plane from your heart, which is entwined with their heart. And let them know that you will look for their signs, that you will listen for their messages and tell them that at any moment they can visit you whenever they need and whenever you need them. And so it is, and let it be. <laughs> you don't think I'm always by your side. This is pumpkin as we finish this. Who do you think brought you a rooster? <laughs> <laughs> Told you it wouldn't she hurt. has such a sense of humor. <laughs> Told you it wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Thank you. Any last, anything you want to share? We oh can just God. close the curtain. I... <laughs> this has been no, no sir words, superlatives. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm just so thrilled to have felt the energy of everyone today. And I'm just, I, I always remain deeply and internally grateful to everybody who shares this path with me. So I just want to say thank you. And thank you, Michael, for letting me come in and talk with all your friends. This has been beautiful. Uh, just, I can feel the energy. It's been so, so my friends, they're your friends. Our friends. <laughs> Wait a second. Our friends. <laughs> <laughs> on both sides of the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> a little love fest. Yes. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, Ooh, be brave, connect with your pets on the other side and on this side of the veil today and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. How does it get any better than this? How does it get <laughs> any better than this? Thank you so much, Megan. Oh, thank you, Michael. That was amazing. Every day there's a new horizon Birds keep on singing, earth keeps on spinning Time to toss any fears they rule you Dance to vibrations, no limitations Those dreams swim out.